Quicken hand, welcome to Quicken Hand. If you're a guest this morning, we're really glad that you're here. Thanks for coming out to be with us. You picked a really good day, actually, to come and visit because a we're not talking about money or giving, so that's always right, a good thing. It's a it's a really full day. We got a lot of things going on, and so it's going to be a, a, a very packed morning for us. Already has been, and the rest of the day is going to be kind of full too. But that's that's a good thing because what that means is that there's growth, there is movement. God is doing some pretty awesome things here in our church. And uh, we're just glad that, glad that you're here. Uh, there's a card on the seat in front of you. You can fill that out and place it at the collection plate a little bit later on, and we'll send you some information about our church. If you have a prayer request, indicate that on the card, and we'll be praying about those first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, I want to welcome a couple of new members that are uh, joining with us this morning, uh, James and Glenda Foster. Are you guys here? Can you stand so we can... Yeah, you guys, right back here in the back. You guys stand up. Hey, glad to have you guys. Welcome. Nice folks. And then uh, our summer interns are with us uh, this morning, and they're actually here 
several weeks early. We asked them to come in a little bit early because we're in the middle of our youth ministry search. I'll give you an update on that in just a second. But I uh, want to welcome Blake Boggs and Bailey Gardner. Glad to have you guys. So uh, Blake, is, this is actually Blake's third tour in Huntsville. He did uh, one uh, summer at the Huntsville Inner City Learning Center there. We got to know him and said, man, that's a great kid. So we had him last year as a youth intern, and he's back this year. So we're glad to have him. And then Bailey grew up here at Twickenham, which is gratifying in its own way because that means that we are raising up kids that are uh, able to serve actively. So glad to have you guys. And you have your first meeting tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and you're in charge of the donuts, okay? So <laughs> welcome to the staff, all right? Hey, quick update on our youth ministry search. Uh, we, we've been, uh, it's been about a month now when uh, Shelby and Jesse uh, moved uh, up to Nashville to work with the Hendersonville Church, and they're doing great. Talked to uh, them last night, and they miss us. Uh, but we are looking for uh, a new youth minister to fill that slot. And uh, I'll tell you that we had a, a, just a, a, a slew of really quality candidates. Many of them reached out to us. For some reason, we've got a pretty good reputation, which is kind of exciting. And so we've narrowed that down to a couple of uh, families that we're looking at. I can tell you that we, were, we, were, uh, we listened to our teens, we listened to our parents, and they really recommended that we hire a husband-wife team. That's what we're looking at. We hope to give you a more specific announcement in a couple of weeks, but uh, things are going really well with that. I want you to keep on praying about it, though. Just keep on praying about our youth ministry search because we're, we're getting close to introducing somebody to you, uh, to, for you to meet them and them to meet us. Speaking of prayer, uh, we have a tradition here that every time a, a baby comes for their first service, we pray over them. And this morning, we've got uh, Joel and Elizabeth Wilder and big sister Sarah, and they're bringing Luke. And so if you will give some golf applause, that would be appropriate right about here, because I think he's asleep. And... Uh, Amy Smith is our children's minister, and Walton Harless is uh, one of our shepherds. Walt, we're going to ask Walton to lead us in a prayer. By the way, we just finished our elder confirmation, and all the elders except Walter were reconfirmed. So, so <laughs> Walton. So. <laughs> Actually, Walton was, was reconfirmed with the rest of them. In fact, it was the highest re, uh, reconfirmation percentage we've ever had for our shepherds. So that just says something really good about their leadership. And we're pleased that Waltons can lead us in a prayer for Joel right here and uh, Elizabeth and little Luke. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we give you praise. This is a joyous occasion. We pray your blessing on Joel and Elizabeth. And we're so thankful for safe arrival of Luke and for this precious life and for big sister Sarah. And Father, I just pray your, your anointing on this family. This, we, we've just sung about your being an awesome God, and there's nothing that demonstrates that awesomeness more than the new life, and we are so thankful. Father, there's many parents I know that are celebrating graduates and, and, and look and, and see this precious child and say, that just wasn't that long ago. Uh, but Father, this, the joy of family as you have designed and the blessings in family. Father, I pray for... Uh, for wisdom, for uh, stamina, for energy, uh, for your to be in the center of this home as, as you have been in the past and just provide everything that's needed uh, for this, this new precious life for, for Luke. And I pray that as Joel and Elizabeth train these children and, and raise them, that they will raise them in the joy and the admonition of you, Father. And we, we give all these this praise and, and these petitions in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 As, uh, as Walton indicated in his prayer there, um, it hasn't been that long ago since um, the parents of these young folks sitting right over here uh, to my right or to your left or right in front of you uh, were about that age. They were, they were little, little tiny babes in arms, and today is Senior Sunday, and we're going to spend our time this morning blessing the Lord for the gift of our seniors and what a blessing they've been to our lives. Um, and I'll tell you guys, it, it, you have no idea how loved you are. You really don't. And what a blessing you are 
to our church. There are a lot of reasons to be thankful for these kids, probably 10,000 of them, probably 10,000 of them. Let's stand, let's sing together. Thank the Lord for a good day. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Father God, we love you, and um, we recognize you this morning, Father, as the, the cause and the reason for all of our celebrations, every day and on every occasion. Father God, today we celebrate our seniors. We thank you, Father, and we praise you for bringing them into our lives and entrusting them to our care. Father... They are the sons and daughters that you gave to us some 18 years ago. And you've allowed us, Father, to, uh, to be a part of their lives, to, to watch them grow, to, to watch them through the nursery windows and through the, the fences at the ballparks and from the seats of the stadiums and the auditoriums and, and the music halls. Father, all along the way, it was you that was guiding them as you guided us, Father, to, to be the church to be the brothers and the sisters and the mothers and fathers that you would have us be for them. And Father, today we, we commend them to you and ask for your continued blessings as they reach this milestone and they head into a new area, a new arena, a new time in their life. 
God, we pray for Jeremy and for Alex, for Carson and for Jamie, for Hallie, for Megan and Kelvin and Dylan and for Abby, for Fanny, for Cody and for Abby. God, this morning we, we pray that you will, you will bless them first and foremost to continue to keep them in your watchful care as your sons and daughters, as our children, as our brothers and our sisters. Father, grant them uh, wisdom to now make the decisions on their own that uh, they've relied on so many others to do for, for so long. Set their eyes on you, Father, and, and all that they do. There are so many things that are going to be approaching them now in the, in, uh, in the next few months, in the next few years. God, we just pray that uh, they will remember where they started, remember whose they are, and remember where they're ultimately going. Father, surround them with friends that love them and that care for them for all the right reasons. Father, raise up leaders around them uh, to continue to, to bless them, continue to guide them. Grant them friends and peers, Father, who share the same interests, the same love for you uh, that they have been raised to, to have. Father, give them the hearts of servants that, Father, in this time of, of newness, in this time of excitement, as they leave high school, that they'll remember, Father, that their primary role is to, to first love you and then to love others. Bless their endeavors, Father, in, in the classroom and in the workplaces that they'll go to from here. Give them, Father, appreciation and thankfulness for, for what they have been given and for what they, you have given them in their lives, Father. Grant them joy. Grant them a joy that only comes from you, Father. And, and Father, prompt them to, to get their happiness from, from the only thing that can, that can really set them apart and uh, give them joy in this life, and, and that is your son, Jesus. Father, we pray in their lives that they will have peace. A peace of knowing that uh, true success uh, the things that really matter are, are found in a relationship with you. And God, they can have that relationship and they can have that peace and they can have that success in anything they do, but it counts for, for not much, Father, if, if you're not involved. God, we pray these thing, same things for us as a congregation. We pray these, these same things as individuals, God, that we will always put you first, uh, that you will go ahead of us in all that we do, and we will recognize and praise and celebrate you and everything that we do. Father, we're so thankful for Jesus, for the ultimate sacrifice he paid uh, that brings us all to this point in our life. God, we just pray that uh, soon the day will come that uh, he will return uh, to take us all home to be with you in heaven forever. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Everyone needs compassion. <laughs>
Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10. Um, this morning, I'm going to be reading from the message uh, for our seniors. This chapter is titled, He Tore Down the Wall. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in the old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our dead sin, our sin dead lives, and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God has us where he wants us, with all the time in the world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. Amen. And in the same sentiment of that song, he makes beautiful things out of all of us. Let's take our offering. You make beautiful things all this pain. I wonder
Y'all excited? I know that this is an exciting time and that you're, you're excited that you're moving on. Some of your parents are very excited that you're moving on. And you're going to, you're in this really cool time you're going through, you're going to hear, you're going to get a lot of cards and you're going to hear a lot of speeches, a lot of things that are said to you, advice, things that are designed to inspire you, to encourage you, to challenge you. And, and it is a time for celebration. But hopefully some of the deeper things that you hear, some of the things you'll hear from Jody this morning, they're specifically designed to make you think to make you think about your life now, and more importantly, how you're going to move forward, how you're going to um, grow, how you're going to find your place in this world, how you're going to take on new tasks and handle new temptations, really how you're going to navigate these new and uncharted waters. And some of the things you're likely to hear from folks are, are like, Always remember to thank those who help you, especially those people in your life that you just couldn't do without and you couldn't have made it without. Remember who you are. Remember those things that you have learned in your life that serve as your life compass, those things you believe and know. Remember whose you are. Remember your roots. Don't forget where you came from. Remember who you belong to. And hopefully, and most importantly, you'll remember to simply remember Jesus. That you will make it part of, of who you are at every step of the way to learn him, to grow in him, to live in him, to learn to love him more, to praise him, to imitate him. And really, as we come together as a, as a whole family for this meal, that's what we do. We're saying many of the same things to each other and to those around us. We're making some of the same declarations that we live and remember to live with a deep and continued sense of gratitude for what he has done, for what he has done that we simply could not have done for ourselves, that we remember who we are, the things that we have come to believe and know that serve as our, as our guide and our compass. That we remember whose we are. We are sons and daughters of the living God. We are his. We were purchased by his blood, and so we are members of this family, and we represent something far beyond ourselves. And that we simply remember Jesus at every step of our way. And, and as we, now as we eat and drink his body and his blood, that we remind ourselves that it is he and he alone, as Mitchell said in his prayer, that gives us the strength to face not only new uncharted waters, but to, for some of us to face the next hour or the next day or the next phase of life, and that we can face it with a renewed sense of purpose and hope. And that's good news today and tomorrow, and every other day. Let's pray. God, we praise you for who you are. God, we praise you for adopting us as your children when we are so unworthy to be that. But we're so honored and humbled to be called your sons and daughters. And God, we know that came at a high price. And so we thank you as humbly as we can in this moment and we do as you would have us do in this moment, and we remember the broken body of your precious son. God, we're sorry it had to come to that. We're sorry that our sin is what had to put him there. But we will forever be mindful of what he did for us. And that you took a child just like we send a child off now. You took your child and offered him for us and for all of humanity. And as we take his body now, we pray that we never forget the love and the sacrifice that it took for our sin. It's through his holy name we pray. Amen.
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same. pray, please. God, once again, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, and we acknowledge to you in this moment and in every moment that we're just a mess, and that we, we have motives and that we have mistakes that we've made that are just not what they should be, and, and, but God, we, we praise you as we partake of a small emblem of your son's blood, that those things are clean. We stand before you white because of, of the blood of your son, and we thank you for that, and we, and we humble ourselves and, and take this emblem um, with hearts of gratitude, and it's through his name we pray, amen. There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is well, Jesus 
has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and I will rise when he calls my name no When you were a child, we made marks on the wall. Your big moments. Your milestones. Marks that remind us how much joy you bring and how quickly it all goes by. This mark is a big one. It's the last one we get to draw. From here on, we will cheer for you from the sidelines. But the marks are yours to make. The world is big. The road is
is winding. So remember the things we've taught you and listen for God to say, this is the way. Walk in it. Now is the time. It's time to go. Make your mark. Today we celebrate our graduating seniors as they prepare to make their mark and in many ways have already begun the stroke of that pen in their lives. I want to invite our elders and wives to come join me on stage. I also want to ask Jody and Lisa to come as they will provide a gift to each graduate as I call their name. Parents, as your child's name is called, please stand and then you can sit back down. Graduates, as your name is called, please come forward, receive your gift, and then join us on stage until all graduates have been recognized. Michael Jeremy Bishop, son of Mike and Beth Bishop, graduating from Grissom High School. He will be attending UAH and plans to major in computer science. Alex Mitchell Brown, son of Mitchell and Christine Brown, brother of Allison Brown, graduating from New Hope High School. He will be attending Middle Tennessee State University and plans to major in music business and audio production. James Lee Elkins, son of Mie Elkins and Mike Elkins, grandson of Wayne and Doris Elkins, graduating from Sparkman High School. He will be attending UAH and plans to major in cybersecurity. Hallie Rose Kuntz, son of Brian and Karen Kuntz, sister to Emily, Noah, and Joel Kuntz. She is a homeschool graduate that will be attending Texas Wesleyan University and is currently undecided on her major. Dylan Lee Morell, son of Dave and Cynthia Morell, brother to Jacob and Elise Morell, graduating from Huntsville High School, who will be attending Auburn University and plans to major in physics. Abby Caroline McKee, daughter of Tom and Christy McKee, sister to Claire McKee, graduating from Madison Academy. She will be attending Faulkner University and plans to major in elementary education. Cody Wynn Smith, son of Lincoln and Amy Smith, brother to Colton and Cooper Smith, graduating from Grissom High School. He will be attending Lipscomb University and plans to major in dentistry. For various reasons, we also have five graduates that were not able to be with us this morning, but we do want to recognize their accomplishments also. They are Carson Counter, Megan Mann, Kelvin Malone Jr., Fonnie Santoyo, and Abby Zane. As Lee Potts, one of our shepherds, comes to pray over this group, would you join me in recognizing these 2017 graduates? Let's pray. Our mighty, sovereign God and Father, this is, a, this is a joyous time when we look back on so many memories. And we thank you for the lives of these kids and what they have meant to their parents, their friends, and this church at large. Father, it's also a very serious and a holy time because we recognize in just a few weeks, Lord, that moms and dads will sit down at a dinner table all across this congregation and there'll be a face missing for the first time. And we pray that in that, Lord, that these, these young men and women would know 
that our hearts are bound up with theirs and that no matter what comes their way, that they are always safely in the hearts of their moms and dads and most importantly, Lord, in the heart of the God of heaven who speaks and galaxies leap into being. Father, for 18 years we have stacked the kindling of the gospel around their heart and we have soaked it in the oil of our prayers and we pray now, Lord, that you would, you would set those hearts ablaze with a passion for your name and for your good. Take these young lives, Lord, and move in their hearts in such a way that they would strike dead every idol in their life. Father, help them by the power of your word and the voice of your spirit to sever the roots of popularity, of success, of sex, in any idol that stands between them and the joy that you offer. Let them be a people whose hearts are totally, wholeheartedly, and recklessly sold out for you. We ask this, Lord, because we seek their joy. And we know that it is only at your right hand that they can find that joy and experience pleasures forevermore. Father, give them a heart to love you above all else, even if it costs them much, so that they might know the awe-inspiring power and happiness to be found in your name, in yours alone. These things we pray over them. In the name of your Son, amen. Love one another. Let's stand. For love. lasts longer than graduation, doesn't it? So. We're almost there. It, it may have already started for you guys, but if it hasn't, over the next few weeks, your, your parents are, are probably going to seem a little clingy. Um, they, they may want you to stick around the house on the weekends a little bit more. They may want to just hang out. They might even want you to sit with them at church on Sunday. <laughs> Here's why. For the last 18 years, they have pretty much organized their lives 
around you and your friends and your schoolwork and your extracurricular activities and your practices and your rehearsals and your sicknesses and your performances and your schedule. And in a few weeks, you're going to leave. And even if you're not moving away, the relationship is going to change a lot. And it's going to leave a huge vacancy in your parents' lives. And you, you don't just eliminate a presence that's been there for almost two decades and not leave a mark, make some kind of emotional impact. So if they get weird, der than usual, um, they're not trying to control you or manipulate you or manage you. Probably they're just trying to figure out how to say goodbye. One of the Ten Commandments says, honor your father and mother. And um, one way to do that over the next few weeks is if they get clingy, let them cling a little bit. Let them hold on to you just a little bit longer, a little bit tighter. This is one of the, it's, it's already been said, you know, two or three times this morning, this is one of the most exciting times in your lives, but I can tell you it's not the most exciting. And it's a great time in your life, but it's not the best time in your life. That's way ahead. So if things are awesome now, they're going to get better. And if things are rotten now, they're going to get better. Either way, it's, it's a good thing. Um, your, 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 the best part of your future is ahead. But it's still tough on mom and dad. Uh, even if you're not moving away, it's going to be tough. Your parents and your church, we, we really have tried to prepare you for this moment. And right now we're wondering, what did we leave out? What did we not say? Is there anything else we can do or say to send you off prepared, more prepared than we were? And so maybe this is it right here. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That one very famous verse says just about everything we want you to know, everything we want you to remember. For example, for God, there is one. There, there is a God. No matter where you go, there is a God. And I, I, don't, I don't intend any judgment by this whatsoever, but depending on the kind of school you've chosen to attend or the kind of career you pursue, that may not always be taken for granted. And some folks will tell you straight up they don't believe in God. And they'll be convincing. They'll have advanced degrees, and they'll have seemingly irrefutable arguments, and they'll have IQs way higher than yours or mine and some of the people in this room, but not all of the people in this room. Um, and they'll be convincing. If you press them, though, and you ask them to tell me the God you don't believe in, chances are you don't believe in that God, and neither do we. In some cases, it's not always true, in some cases, people who don't believe in God have done their homework and they have reached honest conclusions. Those kind of people you can have a conversation with. Most of the time, though, people are operating out of a much less rigorous worldview, one that demanded the conclusion before it considered the evidence. What, what I'm trying to say to you is don't be intellectually intimidated by people who don't believe in God. There is a God, and you grew up in a church full of rocket scientists and engineers and mathematicians and medical professionals, people who live and move and have their being in science, and they believe that there's a God. There always has been a God. There always will be a God. The kind of God that we're talking about is important too, and that's why the second part of that verse, John 3, 16, is important. For God so loved. The God that, that we've tried to teach you about, and I'm not saying we've always been perfect about that. We've tried. But the God we've tried to teach you about and model for you is a God of unconditional love, and that unconditional love is aimed at you. Uh, even if you, you go to a Christian school, though, and some of you will, uh, there's no guarantee that what you hear about God is going to be true. 
And some folks think God is perpetually angry. Some folks think that God is dangerously moody. Some, thinks, some people think that God is eternally difficult to please. Now, again, I'm not going to tell you that we've always been right, but you've got a Bible, and that Bible needs to make its way into your suitcase or into a box, and it needs to get into your dorm room or your apartment or wherever you're going to live, and it needs to be consulted often. And when people tell you things about God, you need to go to that Bible and check what they say against that. That's what we've always wanted you to do with us. If we tell you something about God, check it out. If anybody tells you something about God, check it out. We read a passage earlier this morning from Ephesians 2. God's love is not something you earn. It's God's sovereign choice. He has chosen to love you. And there is nothing you can do or say that will make him stop loving you. There is nothing you can fail to do or say that will make him stop loving you. Now, you got to wake up every morning. We, every one of us has to wake up every morning and decide whether or not we're going to love God back. That's our choice on a daily basis. But if anything in this life is certain, it is that there is a God and that that God is love. God loves you, but not just you. For God so loved the world. God focused his, uh, focused his unconditional eternal love on the people of planet Earth. That means that God is for us, not against us. And wherever you guys go, whether you go to school or into a career or, or wherever, if it's a different state or right here in Huntsville, God is for your fellow students, and he is for the faculty, and he is for the administration, and he is for the staff, the people that clean the hallways and mow the lawns. He is for the community that will surround your school. He is already there. He is already loving the people who are there. And so what I want you to do, what we want you to do, is look for what God is doing wherever you go, and get involved in that. Look for the people that God is loving and love those people with him. Now, a couple of us have already mentioned it this morning, that graduating from high school is just a big deal. And can we just be real honest here? One of the best parts is all the gifts you're going to get. You're about to score. Um, of course, you're going to get some gifts that you really don't know what to do with commemorative pillows. What do you do with that? Snow globes. Somebody's going to give you a snow globe. A money clip. That'll come from one of our older members because they have money. <laughs> and they use it. Uh, somebody is going to give you a shower organizer. That's a hint. Somebody will give you a desktop figurine with an, inspire, with an inspiring quote carved into the base. Somebody is going to give you a copy of Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You Will Go. <laughs> you can re-gift that if they didn't sign it, okay? The best gift, though, has already been given. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. It's the best gift. If you're a parent... Sending a child off into the world is scary. I hope it will comfort you to know that God knows what it's like to send a child off into the world. And no matter who you are, it's good to know that God's love is not just words. It's action. God did not just wish us well. He sent his son to show us what a well-lived live, well life looks like and then to save us from the eternal consequences of not having lived well. And, and while the gift God gave us was unique and incomparable and one of a kind, your fellow recipients are more varied and diverse than you can imagine. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him, that whoever believes, that's the word I want to land on there. Because once you get settled into school or into your career, you are going to meet some pretty interesting whoever's. Even though most of you attended a, a public school, you've still lived a pretty sheltered life. Uh, university campuses are far more eclectic and diverse than most of us are accustomed to, and that's a good thing. You will meet people from all over the country, all over the world. You'll meet people who see things from a different perspective than you. 
and that'll be good for you. You'll meet other Christians, too, and they'll be like you in many ways and probably very, very different in others. And it's a good thing to remember that the kingdom of God is not defined by how you grew up. Um, it's a vast and variegated family. Other churches are not like Twickenham. Even among our own tribe, there's a lot of differences. That seven-letter word, whoever, there in that John 3.16 passage, is huge. God loves them, too, and you're called to love them. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. And that kind of puts things in perspective. Your take on Jesus is the difference between a life that perishes and a life that flourishes. It's the most important message we could possibly give you. I like the way Lee prayed it. And we stack the kindling of the gospel around you and we've soaked it in the oil of our prayers. What you do with Jesus is the most important thing you will ever decide. And if you're putting off making a decision, that itself is a decision. This is a great time to really get serious about that question and to do something about what he has already done for you. Here's the thing I really want you to know, just these two things. We love you. We love you very much. God loves you more than we ever could. You are his precious child, his precious children. Let's stand, let's sing together. Thank you, my family, for helping Amy and I raise three sons, the last of which 
graduated today from this place, and it is an honor to know that you are our family and have joined with us in their raising, and it is our prayer that you would have the same joy of being a part of his church here and this family that we do. Thanks for being here today. We'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning, for this time to be together, to worship, uh, glorify, and honor you. Father, I pray a blessing over each of these graduates. Father, let them live in the victory of Jesus. Let them be secure in their identity with you, knowing that you are their God and you are there for them. Father, let them be a light uh, in every environment, to uh, everyone they come in contact with. And Father, just let them fulfill the purpose that you have for each of their lives. Father, be with us as a church this week uh, as we go to work in our community. Help us to serve in your name, to glorify you. And Father, we just uh, pray that uh, you help us to love those we come in contact as you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.